It's the thought that counts. That may be true. But today, this adage has gone out of the window because it is Christmas, the festival of joy, also just as much the festival of gifts. Singer Mariah Carey may want no part in this. Apparently, all she wants for Christmas is you. But according to data, 68% people the world over love receiving gifts. And research says giving gifts usually brings even more joy than receiving. So this season, an average American is buying nine gifts. An average Briton is spending over $500 on presents. Same in Mexico. In France, it's over $700. And in India, about $50. Because most people love gifts. Yet why is it so hard to give a great gift? Christmas or not, there is pressure to do a good job. Good gifts show that you've paid attention. And science proves it. It builds trust. Bad gifts make you question relationships, like gifting a curly-haired person a hair straightener. But even worse are the gifts that imply a hidden message. Former US President George Bush would know this. In 2004, his gift inventory included knives, rifles, a whip, six jars of fertilizer, and a survival handbook, as if Bush was a paranoid survivalist. This is a clear case of political gifts gone rogue. But sometimes, gift givers and receivers are on the same page, like when Russia's President Vladimir Putin and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un gifted each other rifles in September. They have a team of strategists to thank. But if you find gifting stressful, blame your brain for it. Humans have evolved to consider the viewpoints of others. But shifting perspectives can be taxing. So people gift what seems ideal to them. We may think we're emphasizing on the recipient's needs, but gifts reflect the giver's desires and motivations. Maybe they want you to know more about them. Like when India gifted hampers to G20 delegates, showcasing its biodiversity and traditions. Maybe the gift givers want a big wow moment. Like when Saudis gifted former American President Barack Obama a three-foot-long sword made of gold and crusted with rubies and pearls. This does not mean that the the giver is a narcissist, well, unless, unless they're Prince Harry, who gave the Obamas a framed photo of himself. Most people are just bad at seeing things as others would. In psychology, this is called perspective taking. And it may be tough, but it's not impossible. And this is what makes a great gift, perspective taking. The key is to have more empathy, to pay more attention, to step outside of yourself and notice people's passions and preferences. Pay attention to the topics that enliven them, that excite them. If you're not close to the receiver, some espionage does not hurt. Ask around, look the receiver up on social media, and if you're close, don't stress about the price or the size. Go for sentimental gifts. They may be far more meaningful. Research says recipients appreciate presence with emotional value. And if you want to go one step further, give experiential gifts, like event tickets, special trips, or restaurant gift certificates. They make the giver and receiver feel more connected than material gifts. They're also great for the environment, because every year, more than 23 million gifts, 23 million end up in landfills after Christmas. So does enough wrapping paper to cover the distance to moon. So there are psychological, cultural, economic, and environmental implications. Gifting can be challenging, no doubt. But remember, if you do it right, a gift could do wonders for your relationships, which is a gift in itself.